Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I just wanted to talk about using old gear in 2021. Is it useful using something of an older generation? And well, right here I have the Canon 1D Mark IV. This was created in 2010, so it's over 10 years old. But I just wanted to prove to you that using an older camera can still get you great shots. You don't really need the latest and greatest tech. Yes, this was a pro-grade camera when it came out and it's still pretty much is classed as a pro-grade camera. But it has all the technology in it, it has a lower megapixel count, which has 18, but it can still get a great shot. And the point I want to get to here is, yes, in 2021, we have so much access to great cameras and gear with really good high-tech quality uh, tech inside that camera, and you can just get so much more out of it. But all the generation cameras still get the job done. Yes, I don't have some of the features of live tracking on, on eyes. And especially on this, this is not a mirrorless camera. So I don't have the option of really good video, all that kind of stuff. But it still gets the shot done. So I just wanted to go through getting some shots from close to where I live. And just showing you what kind of images you can still get from a camera like this. But firstly, just some quick information from my sponsor. Datacolor has come out with a little device which reads color out for you so you get accurate color readings if you're trying to find the correct paint or possibly something else. I'm not sure what else I would use it for yet but there are some sensors just built into the bottom which work a lot better than taking a photo wood with your phone or anything else. So the sensor will find the correct color that matches exactly the surface you've put it on. And the great thing about this is it just runs on an app through your phone, which connects on there. And all you have to do is push the button here and you'll get a correct or an accurate color reading from that surface. And then you can go on to use the color code that you get from it to buy paint or anything else. So this is really good for if you're planning on getting a specific color for painting your walls or, or anything else. So there is some possibilities of finding other ways to use this but uh, it's a great little device from Datacolor and I think it's just a really nice thing to have in your pocket. I'm at this great little location on this nice little cobble beach here and well this is fresh water though but uh, some really stunning views. It's a bit hard for you to see it. Maybe I just need to adjust a little bit here. But look at the hills in the background there and the water. Oh, it's so good. So there's quite a few little opportunities here to get a couple of nice shots. There's even some trees and stuff that are just hanging over the water, which I actually think could create a nice little image. There's a boat that's been left here. Obviously somebody, it belongs to somebody here, but it actually fits in really well with the landscape. It looks really beautiful. So the light is changing constantly. There's a lot of clouds and stuff going through. So I kind of need to just basically start taking photos because I might actually miss an opportunity here, especially where the shadows and stuff hit on the hills. Sometimes you get some really nice angles of light and yeah, just sometimes it works out perfectly. One thing I'm loving right now is hearing the motion of the water. Just, I love that sound. That is so good. <laughs> but anyway, let me see, cause there's a nice spot on the hill just behind here where the shadows are cutting through and you're getting a nice spot of sunlight on the mountain in the background. And I think that's something that I think could make quite a nice shot. It's got a lot of detail in it. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, I'm using an older generation 7200 millimeter. This is an F4 and without image stabilization. So I need to use a little bit of a faster shutter speed to make sure I don't introduce any camera shake or anything into it. Um, but definitely, I mean, there's enough light out now to not have to worry about that too much. So I'm probably going to shoot around 320th of a second and put my aperture at around 5.6. 5.6 generally seems to be quite a good spot for most lenses, um, considering sharpness. So that's what I'm going to focus on using. And I have to put my ISO just a little bit up here. 
So I've got my ISO at 160, which is really good. That will keep a lot of grain and noise out of the image. And I think I'm gonna go for a 70 millimeter shot on this. I think that's gonna work out quite nicely. I think the best part about this is the fact that there is a lot of detail in the clouds right now. For me, when it comes to landscapes, I love getting all that detail in from the sky as well. So when it's a clear sky, the sky becomes boring. So having the clouds there, especially when they're a little bit dramatic, you've got some grays, dark, dark grays, and then the bright whites behind, I think just makes it for an extra special image. So let me just quickly take a couple of shots from where I'm standing. So I've moved a little bit further down on the beach here and there's something about that tree at the end there that's hanging over here over the water. I just really like it. There's something that really stands out for me and I think it's quite a stunning, um, it's a stunning view and I think it could make a really nice photo. And well, the only thing I wish that was there right now is some sunlight on it but the problem is the sun is on that side behind the hill there um, it is behind the clouds right now but if i get lucky with the clouds opening up it might just let some sunlight go on the edge of that tree just to add a little bit more depth into it which would be really nice and also i see there's a tree that's lower down below it which is kind of drifting or leaning over into the water and I see that there's actually a spot there where some of the sunlight hits so that could just add a little extra to this um, my point here would be to actually drop down to the water level and take a photo probably in portrait angle if not I will try with landscape depends on what works with this and the situation but I really think this could make quite a nice image and going down lower would just add a little bit more some leading line towards that image um, but yeah let me see what I can do um, right now I'm also shooting on the a7c so I might actually try and take a couple of photos try and uh, duplicate the photo with both cameras just so we can see the difference or if there's any difference at all I'm using a 28 to 75 on that so I'll shoot it around 70 millimeters just so that it matches the distance and the camera angle of course but that way we can kind of see if I can push some different colors out depending on the camera and the technology and, and everything but then again I think they will match pretty much close to each other anyway it's a very similar image and similar situation so yeah let me just take a couple of shots and uh, hopefully I get one where the light does shine through a little bit. So just wanted to quickly show you something. I was just editing both the shots I took with the Sony and the Canon to get a similar shot. Uh, the Sony is on the left side and the Canon is on the right side. The Sony I got it at 75mm, the Canon I uh, shot at 78 so it's kind of hard to get it exactly equal but you'll actually see here that even at 78 it's only three millimeters difference uh, the Canon is zoomed in a lot more so there's definitely something to do with probably uh, lens breathing there so I won't get into that but the one thing I noticed on um, both shots I focused on the tree here in the the background so that's where my focus was but then I noticed as I looked around I shot both of them at f5 and if you look at the background, the Sony is really washed out and blurry, so I'm not really sure what that is. Whereas the Canon is still really sharp, even though I had my focus on the tree in the foreground. And this is something that I'm going to have to do a little bit more testing in. But uh, it was just kind of interesting to see that the older camera got the better shot.
that's it for this video at least. Um, clouds are starting to get a little bit thicker, which means, yeah, you can probably see a spot of light in here, but it is going behind the hill. So at least the side I'm on, it's gonna be a little bit of a lack of good lighting and trying to get certain things exposed the way I like. With the landscape in the background, that's fine. I can get a couple of shots of that and I might do so on my way home. We'll have to see. But anyway, I mean, I feel good with an old camera in my hand. I don't see it as a problem or as something that's gonna hinder me from getting great shots because this will still get me great photos and it's about knowing how to use a camera in the end and that's pretty much what matters. Yeah, it's great having that new tech in a camera and especially when it comes to wildlife and people as well when you got the eye tracking, which I do have on the Sony a7C, but I think in general, this is gonna be my main in-hand camera. This is the camera that's gonna pretty much get the shots that I want. And I can always add better lenses to this or whatever, but I don't see this as being a problem having a really old camera in today's day and age. I think it will still do what I need it to do. As long as I make sure I get the shot and get the settings correct, it'll come out the way I, sh the way I want it to. But uh, I didn't want to make a really long video on this. I just wanted to do a quick short video on showing using an old camera in 2021. And like I said, I'm not going to get too much into this, but if you do want a video next time with me getting a little bit more into depth and detail of using this camera, and showing off a little bit more of its capabilities and maybe even comparing it with another camera like the Sony a7C. Um, my fiance also has a Canon M50, which I could easily compare those two together. But uh, in some way, I actually think this will do better than an M50. Not saying that the M50 is bad, but uh, the capabilities and shutter speed, etc., are a little bit more robust and better in this. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments of what you'd like to see in the future and I'll see you all in the next one.